Hey guys, thanks for coming back. When we last left off, Phil said that the interview was fair and that it went well. This is the moment that it changed. The next day on March 17th, Side Scrollers did another stream called Dark Side Phil Aftermath, Side Scrollers Podcast, March 17th, 2023. The first topic of interest that they talked about was how they truly believe that the WWE Champions account was Phil's. I mean, I'm 100% sure. I, I like, think it's his. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. There's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so weird that he was willing to like expose more information about himself like all of his personal expenses that no one cared about no one talked about and like talk about his wife's restraining order which he seemed very apprehensive at first to talk about before the show he didn't want to talk about it and then he said he's like fuck it i'll talk about this and then but like you're not going to just show your username on a on a mobile app or it, not even to the public world craig in a private right. email for him to be like, okay, it's not him, everyone. You know what I mean? Like, really? I, I think that. Yeah. I right. don't know, man. It, it was fucking weird. And then, and then he was saying like, I'm not addicted to mobile this this mobile game, but I was addicted to the previous mobile version of the game that people claim I'm addicted to, and also this other game that I was addicted to. But I and I had a problem, but I beat that addiction, and I'm good now. Like, it's fine. I'm like, come on, dude, really. God, it's your it's your username i i think that you know i think it, it it shouldn't be lost that we like we greatly appreciate phil coming on the show and being so open about things um and and, and, and on that note major props for staying the whole time mm -hmm. like I, honestly I, I was shocked and i and i said this to him uh, i don't know if if we were still live uh before I, I dipped out after i said this i was like bro like props for staying like you you got some major balls for like dealing with stern interviewers because like we didn't go easy on him at all yesterday and then to talk to keem who he clearly had issues with and to have it he was didn't come in here thinking like all right i'm gonna have to deal with talking to keemstar as well and it's like dude you stayed and then the freaking gundam clip and he stayed and it's like you know what all right dude can take some punches after talking about phil threatening to dox people adam brought up how phil would seemingly not remember a lot of things i i don't like that he said so many times th throughout the interview conveniently i don't remember saying that i, can... I mean i i've been doing this for a decade plus i don't remember saying going that. going back to oh that sure thing. sure just like, i don't bro, yeah just, i don't remember saying that yeah. you don't remember like Here's the clip of you saying it. Do you remember Receipts. now? Do you, do you remember now? All right. Mm. How do you feel about it now that it's proven that you actually did, in fact, say that shit or do that shit? I don't yeah. know. It wasn't a threat. Bro, it was a threat. All right. Maybe it was a threat. So it was a threat. It was a threat. It's like uh, frustrating. Like pulling Sorry. teeth, really. Trying to get the words out. But I, I pulled him out, though. You did. He did admit, finally, that it was a threat. I was like, ha, yes, mini victory. Let him Gotta cook. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> Craig made a great point about how Phil either picked a one for his luck stat or was lying to them before they brought up Nick Ricada again. I think that with, with just the mountain of indisputable evidence and the sheer circumstances attached to everything that they're like, Phil is either the most unlucky person in the history of the world with with the most ridiculous no. odds against him or no. he's lying he's a pathological yeah. liar right. he's right. very clearly lying yeah when Dude. you when he was talking when you were talking to him about the bank statement the odds of all of these things lining up so how bank account numbers work is it's a routing number and an account number your account number is based off your name so in order for somebody to get that account number, they would have to live where he lives and have his name. And Riketa, uh, uh, and the same bank. Riketa Law, shout out to, to Riketa. He's fucking awesome. Um, he, he did like a breakdown on DSP and like looked at his bankruptcy shit. And like bankruptcy, bankruptcy courts don't look at like small businesses closely. They're just like, oh, this is this is like... This isn't some multi-million dollar corporation that we got to make sure, excuse me, everything's in, in order that they're not trying to just get away with like, you know, getting rid of like millions and millions of dollars of debt. You know, it was like, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, whatever. I don't know. I think it was, it was all says, bullshit. Uh, Phil always backpedals, uh, backpedals with the bank leaks. Uh, 
He first says they were doctored statements with some real retractions and some fake. Now he says it's all fake. Mind boggles. Great interview, guys. Craig talked about how out of touch Phil was with the modern internet and how things are done now. Level one. Well, and I think it comes back to the idea that Phil has been in his own world for the better part of 15 years. And that's kind of the dangerous thing of of being a content creator online is especially if you don't go out and you're you're in this cave for six you know for 12 hours a day six days a week you don't see what's happening around you you don't see how the world evolves and the idea of like a great example of this is is well the world functions through dms and text and twi you know and things like that now it's not done through email like it was 15 years ago um you know phil's a dinosaur in that sense and he hasn't evolved over time he hasn't evolved with the uh, he hasn't been mobile and and uh, um, agile, and I think that's that's why he's still sitting at you know like the world one one. So, well, and he he has such a, a high view of himself. You know, I, I said it to him: illusion of grandeur, man. Like you, you really think that you're this freaking king uh, on this pedestal that everyone needs to worship you and give you money and like you you had it really well for a long time because there was no competition. You got into YouTube early, man. Like good shit but you didn't you didn't continue to evolve with the internet you stayed stagnant like thinking that you, you were worth people's attention and you weren't adam and craig would tell everyone how they couldn't get the interview out of their heads for the rest of the night with adam bringing it up at dinner multiple times and craig thinking about the entire time he was watching basketball uh yesterday after after the show because i stream every day uh on my rumble channel uh the krigler show check it out um shameless plug Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I was talking while you're at it, go buy some Krigler coffee. So while, yeah, thank you. Um, while I was, ta I was talking to my wife because we were eating dinner together, and she was telling me about her day. And like randomly, I'd be like, and then this, and then he fucking said this. Like, <laughs> who the fuck? And she was like, wow. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I'm just like things are popping in my head that I'm so shocked that he said certain things and responded certain ways, and it happened like three or four times. And uh, I. I Man, I had to like try to shut it out. So this is this is helping me uh, listen, process it all. Thank you, Chad. You're you're not alone. You're not alone because what I'm listen. Yesterday was one of my favorite days of the entire year. Generally, not because of the dark side Phil interview, because but because March Madness kicks up, which is like this big basketball <laughs> tournament. I love it. Did right? anyone actually open up Craig's list? Of, well, like, hold, you hold, know... hold on, hold on. No, I don't. Because oh, yesterday, while, while the games are going on, like I'm watching this random game. It's like Texas versus whoever. And in the middle, I'm like, and then Phil said this, like, like I just out of nowhere. So you know what I feel like? Yeah, I know exactly what you what you feel like. And listen, we, you and I went through a battle yesterday, and it, and we're definitely gonna have some um, PTSD, some Phil traumatic stress order, order after that. Yeah. Um, well, There's... it makes sense because you you're probably sitting there and you have to process things, and that you know what I mean. And it, ugh. <laughs> then it happened. I was actually just finishing writing up this script when I saw this. DSP reacts, backstabbed by side scrollers. Hello, everyone. Phil here, doing something that I didn't want to do, something that I didn't plan on doing whatsoever. All right, tonight is a stream that's completely random. That uh, originally originally was supposed to be gameplay. All right, like. I just want to get back to normality around here, uh, but I'm not allowed to, so it's all right. Tonight, I basically am going to do something. I'm going to put an end to a lot of stuff tonight for once and for all because basically I, I find myself in a situation that, I'll be honest with you, I'm not surprised I'm in this situation, but at the very same time, um, I'm, I'm disappointed for sure, but let's just say that this was not a shocker, nor is this something that has taken me by, oh my God, I can't believe it. Uh, nor uh, was it not something that I had already planned. Because I knew, I pretty much knew what was going on all along. But let us begin, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday, March 17, 2023. Yesterday I appeared on a podcast called Side Scrollers. It was a five-hour interview. A lot of people like to call it an interrogation. I will call it an interview because that's what it was scheduled to be. And I feel like, you know, that's what it basically was. Um, To give you the... Phil would start off talking about his relationship with Craig from the Screw Attack days. A quick backstory. I am a fan of an old website called ScrewAttack.com from the mid-2000s. This website used to put out daily gameplay content way before YouTube even really was a big thing. And they used to have a, a podcast on there called uh, Side Scrollers. 
And I loved it. I listened to side scrollers. I used to listen to all the content or watch all the content on the site. I was fans of those guys. I went out and met the people from ScrewAttack.com at a convention called Magfest in 2007. And this was long before I was ever a YouTuber. Okay, uh, they were awesome people. But when I became a YouTuber, I kind of lost touch with them. Never really watched their content anymore. I was too busy making my own, just like I fell out of con watching a lot of people's content. Um, I was friendly with a guy named Stuttering Craig. He was one of the two, at the time, one of the two co-owners. Later on, he became, I think, the big, the sole owner of the, the company. And uh, he was running a convention in 2013 called, 2013, excuse me, called Screw Attack Gaming Convention. And so, they're looking for guests. I reached out, said, I'd like to be a guest. And, you know, now I'm a YouTuber. Here I am years later, used to be a big fan of yours. And now I'm a YouTuber. Can I be a guest? And, and, you know, Craig was super nice, nothing but cordial. One of the nicest guys literally I've ever met. And at a time when, at that time, the internet was starting to turn against me with that whole, this is how you don't play movement. And to have someone who was actually being nice to me was a rarity, okay? That was the last time that I talked to Craig, uh, 2013, all right? And it's been a decade. A lot changes in a decade, correct? So out of the blue, Craig emails me my business email, which is nice of him to actually figure out that there's ways to contact people via business emails when they list it publicly, but we don't have to criticize that tonight, I guess, because someone else. Anyway, um, so he emails me via my email last month, the middle or early, early February, I would say. And he tells me, you know, I'm rebooting side scrollers, and your name came up as one of the earlier people that we'd like to have on the show as a guest. Would you like to be on the show? I took a look and I was like, you know, this would be interesting. Phil pointed out that Craig was talking to people like It's a Gundam, who made some interesting videos on Phil, such as described in autistic detail. Now, you got to be a little skeptical, because as we're getting closer and closer to this interview, I start getting wind that you know that, that Craig is like directly talking to all of your detractors every day. Like he's talking to It's a Gundam. He's talking to these people who literally have entire giant video series about you that are all monetized and profitable, and the reason why they go down this rabbit hole is to make money. It's stupid, but that's why they do it. They know that the day that they talk about dark side filling a negative light, it's big dollars for them because people like this internet drama. And that's who he's talking to, okay? I'm like, no, I'm not aware of that. I figured he was bombarded by my detractors or whatever, but what can you do, right? I mean, it's public record. He's talking with them on Twitter and everything, right? So... Basically, I, I'm going into the interview, and I'm trusting Craig. I am. I trust stuttering Craig, the owner of, of Screw Attack, and now the person who runs Side Scrollers. I'm trusting him this is going to be a fair interview. This is going to be unbiased, right? Like always, Phil couldn't help but talk about the money. Okay. And I don't know if this is true or not, because I, I didn't tell you guys this. I couldn't see the stream chat. Like, I purposely was not in, a, in, a, in the stream chat at all or paying any attention to it. I have no idea what happened. They made thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars on that show, okay? Who did they make it from? The detractors. The detractors were there. And every time that basically they were asking a prying question or, you know, twisting a little more, there was more contributions coming in, okay? That's what I've been told. I didn't sit there and count the dollars as they came in. That's what I've been told for people who actually were watching the stream. You could see it coming in. People were adding up. They're like, oh, my God, it's thousands. That's thousands of dollars that came in, Okay. Phil gave us some new info and read out an email that he sent to Craig and then talks about what he said, and I quote, when the bullshit happens. On the show, I never mentioned it here. It's a game that I play. So here you go. Here's the same account that I use on all my games. Here it is. It can prove not only is there crossover between all of their games, but also here's the Apple ID it's tied to and it shows the evidence. And here's the actual game account that, that's in the phone. I was going to send him literally all of that. Okay. And it was around 6 p.m. That I sat down after dinner with my wife on the couch. And I'm about to do this. So I email Craig. And I say to him, are you ready for this? Because now you're going to get you're gonna get the full story. You ready for this? Here's what actually happened. Because I'm tired of the bullshit. This is literally, I'm reading you the email I sent him word for word. Ready? Hey Craig, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on how the show went. I hope that this is a big benefit for you guys. If so, this might have actually been the only time in history my infamy has actually held something. I know that you'll want to get back to normalcy, but I'm looking forward to hearing from you again about the possible next appearance. Now, what I did here is I shared some thoughts about my what my viewers had been saying on my 90-minute my decompressed stream. Here you go. You ready? Um, my viewers are telling me they think you and Adam were too harsh, but I disagree completely. As I, as I told you on the podcast, you were nothing but fair. There is pretty much a 100% consensus that the Keemstar bit was intrusive, and it gave him free plugs for his own content, and it took away about an hour that could have been more on topic. 
You know, I don't, I, I didn't mind, but that's the vibe my viewers are sharing with me. It would likely be best for a repeat appearance to just be us to avoid people feeling that it's a surprise or a trick to shock me on, on, the, on the interview, okay? And now, the key, the key part of this whole message. How often do you actually check this email because I'm 50-50 on showing you my champion's account, especially because of what Keemstar said on the show? If you don't know what Keemstar said, it doesn't matter what you send to Craig, it's too late. It's literally what he said. Makes no sense, but, you know, that's what he said. He says, I feel nobody, I said, I feel nobody would really believe, even if you vouch for me at this point, you know, but I respect you and I'm still considering it, despite the fact I'm incredibly scared that my info will once again leak and hurt me. Word for word, I just read it from my email. There it is, okay? I sent that again at 6, 18 p.m. yesterday, all right? So the show, you know, my show ended at 4. I uploaded, I had dinner with my wife, everything cleaned up, sat down on the couch, and I sent it at 6, 18 all right? There you go. Now, you might say, well, why didn't you just send everything? Because number one, again, I'm not 100% trustworthy yet, but I want him to say, yeah, I'm going to be right here tonight on the email. So you can send it and I'll look at it. I'll immediately delete it. That way there's no risk. That's what we had said on, on the podcast. That if I'm going to send him all that information, he would immediately delete it. The moment it comes in, he would check it. Okay, there it is. There's the evidence. Got it. And immediately delete it. And it's safe, right? Because it's gone. So that's, the, that's what I want to know. That's what I asked him. Do you, how often do you check this email? All right? I did not receive a response. Okay? Until today at 5.45 p.m. All right? So we can pretend like that's where it was at, at that point. Okay? So I sent him that last night, 6.18 p.m. Zero response yesterday. No response at all at that email address. So... Last night, I do a two-hour level one podcast over on DSP Gaming. Of course, people are asking me more questions. At that point, I'm still feeling positive about it. I'm like, hey, you know, it's exactly how I wanted it to go. People kept telling me on the podcast last night that Craig and Adam were unfair to me. I will say this publicly again. I don't think that's the case. I think it was a, a, that was exactly how I expected the interview to go. I really, I thought that's exactly how it was supposed to go, Okay. I didn't think they were going to believe me and be blown away by the fact that I sat on there and I really couldn't show them the definitive evidence. But I emailed Craig and said, I'm going to send you the evidence, basically. Are you monitoring this email? Okay? Read it word for word to you guys, right out of my email. Okay? So anyway, that's where we left it. All right? Overnight, nothing happens. In the morning, apparently they turn on their show. Now, here's where the bullshit starts. Phil started talking about how the host started dunking on him the next day during the Aftermath stream and called them two-faced. No, do you understand the whole show was dumping on you? Like, literally, every host came on and essentially said, they didn't believe a word you said, you're a filthy liar, you know, you're, you're not that they were, like, like, totally saying what a scumbag or anything like that. But essentially, I guess, what the theme of the show was, was that they're all sorry for me because I'm such a person who apparently is really just a sad guy in a bad situation, and he's addicted, and, you know, he's a liar, and it's all bullshit. And essentially, it's funny, all right? Because they're doing the show, all right? And apparently, when they're doing the show, every time a super chat comes in, it's literally from one of my detractors. And every super chat is something nasty. And they read it, and they all collectively laugh at it. Ha, 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 that's funny. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Let's laugh at Phil because he's not here. Ha, 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 ha. They didn't do that when I was on the show. They waited till I wasn't. That's funny, isn't it? Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Right? And they're showing on for two and a half hours. All right? Now. I got a question for Craig and the Side Scrollers crew. I really do. I have a genuine question. All right? Let's 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 actually ask the question. We all know that my appearance on Side Scrollers is the most popular thing they've ever done. Correct? It even brought in Keemstar. Brought in Keemstar. Big, big ass YouTuber. All right? Do you think that Keemstar would have ever appeared on the Side Scrollers podcast if I wasn't on there? Right? Okay. So they see, oh my God, this is the biggest thing we've ever done and we just made an insane amount of money, thousands of dollars from detractors. So what do they decide to do the next day when I'm not there, which is not the agreement we had? They do the DSP Pylon show, 
where we're just going to sit there and we're going to take a big dump on him because he's not here to actually respond to any of it, all right? There's a difference between journalism and online drama for personal gain. It's cause and effect here. They saw the money rolling in on Thursday, and they decided instead of doing our Mario Kart show that was planned and we were supposed to be doing on Friday, instead, we, that, who cares about that? We're going to ride this gravy train on. We're going to do the Dump on Dark Side Phil show. And it became a two-and-a-half-hour clown show of them essentially taking in donation after donation after donation from every detractor under the sun to read it, laugh at me, make jokes about me, and then make money on it. Okay? So here's the question I have for Craig and the Side Scrollers crew. If the Dark Side Phil interview on Thursday only had had 100 viewers, and if you had made $5 the whole show, would you have done the Dark Side Phil Aftermath show on Friday? I, I would love to hear their answer. I'm sure they will. All right? But, you know, um, the, it's, it, like I said, it's cause and effect. The reason that they did the show is because they wanted the money, right? Or else, if there's no profit there, why are they going to do it again? There's no point. They got to ride that popularity out while they have it, all right? This is literally the same thing that all of my detractors have done for years. Phil decided the best thing to do would be to react to the interview to and gave together. a story on how his wife and felt we're about see, it. You know, for ourselves, oh, here it's playing now. We're going to see for ourselves if everything that's been said is true, okay? There you go. So I announced this. So now it's public that I'm doing this. Okay? So I go on, I go downstairs to have dinner. My wife is pissed. She's very upset. I say, what's going on? Hopefully nothing's happening. Bad in the house. She says, oh no. But you know, I saw that you announced that you're going to watch that, their show from this morning. Did you watch it? I said, no, I haven't seen it yet. He said, oh, I did. She was not happy. And she only watched maybe 10, 15 minutes of it. And she said she couldn't even continue. She's like, literally, it's a shooting gallery against you. Like, literally, it's just, they're just 100% reading every super chat. And everyone is a detractor, a known detractor. And they're laughing at you, and they're making fun of you the entire show. And I was like, wow, that, that is shocking to me, again, because I was led to believe these guys were going to be legit, right? And... Apparently, this is not it. This is not what it was supposed to be. You know, I was supposed to just be treated fairly. Now, fairly, you know, if you want me to be an object objective, right? That means that you're going to listen to answers, but you're not going to do this show after. You're going to, okay, listen, you, you now you judge for yourself, and maybe you ask for five, ten minutes on your show. What do you guys think? Here's what we think. Okay, moving on. It's a topic for later. He's going to be on again, right? Great. Okay. Now, that's not where it ends, ladies and gentlemen. Because as I said, I was still fully intending that tonight we were going to sit here and we were going to react to this, which we still might do. Phil then read out an email exchange that him and Craig had about the show. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this? I don't think I was ready for this one when I read it. You ready for this? Here's a response I got at 5.45 p.m. today, two hours ago. I think the show went okay yesterday. We talked about it at length on today's show as a debrief. That's what he called it, a debrief. You shitting on me for two and a half hours is a debrief. Interesting. My debrief was saying, you guys did a great job interviewing me and defending you for two hours against my fans. That was my debrief. And then also apologizing to someone who I harmed in my, my past and apologizing publicly to Review Tech USA. That was my debrief from the show. Your debrief was a two and a half hour destroy Dark Side Phil show and make money on it. Okay, let's continue. I think we all left the interview mentally exhausted and feeling incredibly frustrated. At the end of the day, we want what's best for you. The things that are laid out about everything, the WWE mobile game, the bank stuff, it doesn't make sense. There's too much evidence saying it's yours and your only evidence is you saying it's not. I'm going to address that in a second. I feel like we gave you multiple opportunities to turn this around, but you seem so dug in, even in the face of insanely detailed evidence. You wouldn't take it. Even with Keemstar coming on, I tried to lay out similarities you feel towards him and the way people feel about you based on things they've seen online, and it was tough. Like, that is, that's not even a point. It has nothing to do with anything, having Keemstar on the show. It has nothing to do with any point at all. Honestly, I'm disappointed. Like I said, we want what's best for you. We very much do. You have to help yourself. When you're ready to take that step, I'll gladly help you on your journey. You deserve to get to level two. I know you can do it. 
What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? That email proves that he went into it with 100% preconceived notions of what the truth was based on talking to detractors for two weeks, right? You, I'll, I will give you full disclosure. I will give you absolutely full disclosure here because I want to be fair. After about a week of him directly talking to the detractors only, he emailed me once and he said, what would you like to see? Or excuse me, let me try that. Take that, try that again. I misspoke. What would you like me to see? Right? He says, what would you like me to see before your interview? And I sent him my react to my down the rabbit hole video, all right, from last year, which really covers my, my days as Street Fighter, my early days as a YouTuber, all the way to 2017, covers it all. And I reacted to all of it. And I essentially said, listen, I'm sorry for a lot of the wrong things I did. I admit that I, they were wrong. Here's some real bad misconceptions about a lot of that, okay? So I sent him that video because I wanted to basically give him an idea of how there's been a ridiculous amount of misconceptions about me on the internet. And when I address them fairly, you see how they kind of, you know, at least make sense. Not to say that I'm infallible. I may make a lot of mistakes. But at the same time, I'm changing for the better, which they laughed at during the show yesterday, by the way. Oh, change, you're changing. Yeah, it's called human evolution. Do you not understand that someone today is not someone last year, is not someone five years ago, is not someone 10 years ago? It's a constant struggle to improve yourself. And when you make a mistake, you admit you made the mistake and you move on for the better. If you keep making the same mistake a million times, that's a different thing. They laughed at me when I actually admitted like Adam was laughing about change and everything. Ha ha ha, right? So anyway, this email, essentially what this email says to me, all right? Now keep in mind, the last email I had to him was, man, I'm glad you guys made a lot of money and... I would like to actually send you the evidence of my innocence, but I need to know how often you check the email because, you know, I, I want to be sure that you're going to get it and delete it right away. Did you hear a response to that anywhere in his email? Phil said it's a Gundam like five times in a row and it made it really sound weird. Because I hate to tell you this, I really feel like he loves, um, he absolutely loves like it's a Gundam, right? He loves It's a Gundam. He laughs at It's a Gundam. He thinks it's funny. He's kept, he kept mentioning It's a Gundam, all right, on the on his shows over the past couple of weeks that It's a Gundam is a troll of Dark Side Phil. So it's obvious he watches his content and shit, right? He loves this guy. Why right? do you think that he, of all the detractors, what's the first clip that they played in the interview and then they ran out of time? It's a Gundam. He's a fanboy of them, right? So anyway. Phil seemingly changed his opinion about the interview and said that it wasn't fair. So here's the thing, and here's where sadly this entire thing falls apart, all right? When they interviewed me yesterday, they were interviewing me from the perspective of I'm already guilty, they already believe it, and all they want to do is hit me with the question where I'm finally either going to reveal something that I didn't intend to and show that I'm guilty, or else I'm just going to confess. Adam was even saying it multiple times during the show to Craig, he says, Craig, it sounds like you're trying to get him to confess. And that's actually not right. Because he was. He wanted me to confess. You could tell from where the interview was going by the end. Did you notice? Did you really notice that during the interview, they were only harping on the 100% questions, right? That could not essentially really be like debunked without exposing myself. Correct? There's easily debunkable questions that could have been asked. None of those were asked. It was all the ones that the detractors have harped on because all they've done is talk to my detractors for two weeks. That was not a fair and balanced interview that was well-researched. That was an interview that was all the tough questions right up front. Then get Keemstar in here, which tell me what that did. Did absolutely nothing except gave them a popularity boost to have a big YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying? All this is just bullshit. I've had, I, you know, you have it up to a certain level and it's like, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that this was them being objective. They were not. By the time that I got on their interview yesterday, they were 100% sold that I was guilty. And this was a fishing interview to try to get me with a gotcha thing or, you know, got him, got him right there. There's the evidence. Now you're guilty. Now he'll admit it publicly on our show and we'll blow up or to just get me to admit that I was doing it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all right, listen to me. It's not true. 
and I'm not going to admit something that's not true. There's a lot of things that I've done wrong in my life. A lot. I'm not going to admit things I haven't done. It doesn't matter how much circumstantial evidence there is. This would never, ever, ever fly anywhere legally at all because it's all bullshit. It's all circumstantial nonsense. This email I got from Craig literally word for word is saying, I never trusted you. Okay? And that's why he even says, I, does he even say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give me, send me the evidence. Doesn't want it. <laughs> he doesn't want the evidence. You know? Phil claimed that this wasn't side scrollers, but the dark side Phil shit show and went off on Keemstar again. You have literally turned the side scrollers podcast, which used to be the show that was supposed to be the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on planet earth. And you turned it into the dark side Phil shit show where you profit from my misery. You failed. You destroyed your own show. Wow. Amazing. Because now, right now what you've got, you've got temporary popularity based on the negativity being thrown towards me. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. You're making a lot of money. That's for sure. Congratulations. Right? I certainly haven't seen any benefit like that from this, nor was that my intention. But it sure seems that way when you're doing an entire show today and you're still rolling into the gravy train, right? So, you know, hey, you be you. And again, with the hilarious st stab here, we want to get you to level two. You want to get me to level two? You want me to be like you? You want me to stoop to your level? So you want me to have someone on a show, interview them, and the next day do an entire show shitting on them for profit. That's what you want me to do. You want me to be like you. I will never be like you. That's not me. I've never done that and I never will. I don't make that shit, right? I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not Keemstar. I'm not gonna, I don't, again, why was Keemstar on the show yesterday? Pretty obvious, right? You wish you could be him. Why do you else you think he's on the show? That guy is fucking reprehensible. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows the guy has hurt far more people than he's ever helped. And, and any moment that he pretends like he's doing something to help someone, it, it, look how he's doing it. Oh, I'm helping Wings and Boogie by paying them money to beat each other up in a boxing match. That's, that's insane. You're out of your mind, right? And you want to be like that. That's who you want to be. You're telling me that's how you need to be successful. That's how the internet works. No, 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 no. That's how this low level of internet works. And the thing is, there's a monstrous amount of people who are successful doing really immoral, underhanded things on the internet. Okay? Tons. And what you essentially are telling me is that's what you think I should be and that's what you sure as hell want to be. Well, go ahead and you can be that. Leave me the fuck out of it. Phil then went back to reacting to the stream. Overall, Phil seemingly had a not very good opinion on the gang. They only listen to the detractors. What a bunch really of fucking idiots. It's, it's, you got a point. Craig sent Phil an email and Phil responded live on stream. Oh, Stuttering Craig wrote me an email. That's nice. <laughs> Craig, apparently right now you're ripping us a new asshole. What do you think I was going to do? Do you think I was going to be happy of what you did today? Your actions are heinous, dude. You literally came at the interview completely unfairly. You didn't approach it objectively. You admitted it in your email to me. All you did was sit and listen to detractors. Then you sat and took money from detractors. And then you sat and took money from detractors again. This is not an interview. This is not professional. This is not what a professional would want to do. You literally are happy, right? You are happy, very happy that you got this. Don't be, don't lie now. Come on. I mean, seriously, dude, you're, you're so excited that this has happened for you, right? <clears throat> anyway. Phil was nice enough to give Adam an award, though. Wrong. Oh, man. Uh, Congratulations, yeah, Adam! Okay. Adam! Good. With the most uninformed rant of the year award! Yes, Adam! So everyone, 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 applaud this man. Most uninformed man I've ever heard talk about me, actually. Like, like my, my detractors intentionally are uninformed and say wrong things. This man just made no effort to be informed whatsoever before he went off. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever really seen uh someone as misinformed about me and then actually pretend like they knew what they were talking about right wow but again 
doing it on the show that I'm not on, so I can't counter it. That's pretty impressively amazing, isn't it? Phil would then call Craig and Friends disingenuous. So congratulations. Congratulations to Craig, right? You proved who you really are, along with your, your group there. You know, disingenuous. And uh, it's messed up. It's pretty messed up. All right? Not once, you did not go into that interview even thinking that I was going to be innocent at any moment. You actually went in with all the preconceived notions from the detractors. All right? So it's fucked up. And it is what it is. But you know what? You live and you learn, right? And this was a test for me. It really was. It was a test to see what would happen if I did something like this. It went pretty much the worst that you could expect, right? Let's be honest here. Phil made the statement that he was done with interviews unless they were on his show. Moving forward, if I want to talk to someone, they're going to be on my show. You understand? Phil called side scrollers a pit of snakes and went on about the money again. Possibly happen. Literally. That was one of the most wrong things that you could have done is had that show with no opportunity for me to counter any of it. That's just, I can't believe it. That was so backhand, so, so, that you want to talk about, oh, I'm in a pit of snakes. That's, are you kidding me? <laughs> really? After I give you five and a half hours of my time, that's how you thank me? Wow. And all that money you made on that sh fucking show, right? The biggest show you've ever had, right? But that's that's how you do it. You have a whole show that's just crapping on me. Like, wow, amazing, right? This just is stupendous. I, w I defended them last night. Phil ended the stream once again saying that he would never go on anyone else's stream ever again. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. In conclusion, the two-hour shit show stream that I didn't want to do tonight, it's, it's very simple, all right? Moving forward, I'm not appearing on anyone's show. Don't ask me to. I've already addressed all the bullshit to the best of my ability. I'm done with it. There's no point in bringing it up ever again. Uh, let all these idiots talk about it on their own content and leave me out of it. I'm here to put out fun gameplay, interactive podcasting, react content, and have a fun time with my small audience. I'm happy with that. All right? I'm very happy with that. And I will continue to do that and enjoy that for as long as I can. All right? And I hope that you guys will continue to join me uh, for all this content moving forward. I appreciate that. All right. The experiment worked because this was an experiment to see if someone could actually treat me fairly and neutrally. They did not. It was completely one-sided as evidenced by who they spoke with, how they approached it. The emails I just got from Craig. I mean, it's all evidence. Even what they're saying on the show. One-sided stuff. They don't even know the truth about what they're saying. They're literally speaking things that are factually untrue about me as if they're factually true with an audience, a captive audience. You know, it's messed up. No one to retort or say, what are you talking about? That's wrong. You know, that's, it's, it's just, it's fucked up. So I'm done with it. I'm not, I'm not entertaining being in an interview like this ever again. There's no point. All right. However, if people want to appear on my, sh uh, you know, over here and do a nice civil conversation or interview or whatever with me and we go back and forth, we have, a, like, uh, that's what I mean. Like, if I have Rich on from Utech USA, I don't want to interview the guy and grill him about shit. I just want to have a conversation. Just shoot the shit with him. Talk with him a little bit back and forth. If he asks me something I don't want to answer, I won't. If I ask him something he doesn't want to answer, he won't. Just be civil with each other. You know what I'm saying? Surprisingly, that's not the end of the story though. During the stream, Phil was being restreamed by a detractor called Duty. During the stream, Keemstar called in to talk about Phil's hypocrisy before Duty talked about Phil too. All right, what's up Keemstar, man? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, so listen, all right. K Chat, what the fuck is going on with this guy, all right? Is he not just criticizing side scrollers and saying that they're like two-faced or something like why are they talking all this shit about me behind my back i was right there why didn't they say anything right there to my face bro you were face to face with me and the minute we were done having our conversation you went on this fucking wild crazy rant for two straight days talking shit on me how come you didn't say any of that shit to my face like, this dude is a walking, talking, fucking hypocrite. And at a base level, a pathological liar. He lies about every I fucking thing. Money. I really do. I He's literally money. begging like the, the internet to you bully know. him in every single one of these streams. Now, I know some of you guys are like experts in this DSP I shit, but money. I know I really very do. little. I and every time I see like just a little bit, I see a fucking basket case. This is ridiculous. 
I was there yesterday. He wasn't saying any of this fucking crazy shit to my face. Keemstar claimed the real reason Phil said no was because he's addicted to being a victim. The real reason why Phil didn't take that $50,000 is because if he would have took that $50,000 and had a real job, then he wouldn't be able to beg. This guy is not just addicted to fucking buying skins in a WWE fucking mobile game. He's addicted to being a victim. He's addicted to being a victim. Every single stream I see, he is a victim. So, this is yeah. what he is obsessed with. He is obsessed with going online and being like, man, this is happening and that's happening to me and this is happening to me and I got to pay my rent and we got to do this. Like, da, 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 da. this. We're looking at addiction. We're looking at fucking somebody that just wants to be the victim so fucking bad. Dude, if he won the lottery, he wouldn't tell you. If he won a million dollars... All right, he would secretly hand in the fucking ticket and he wouldn't tell anyone because if he told anyone then he wouldn't be a he, he wouldn't be able to be a victim anymore. Dude, that is what we're dealing with. Dude, and dude, so dude, when it really comes down to it, and this is a final thing I want to say. Okay. When it really comes down to it, we're dealing with not just someone with an addiction. We're dealing with a fucking scammer because he is lying. He is scamming his audience and. Dude, if I'm wrong, sue me. Take me to court, Phil. And then I'll fucking... <laughs> we'll make sure we get all the fucking documents. We'll get the real, like, facts and stuff. It'll come up uh, during Discovery and the lawsuit. And we'll find out where the money's going. Keemstar discussed how he wanted to talk to Phil again because of how sick he was of Phil being a scammer. Look, dude, I need a fucking face to face with Phil again. I don't care who sets it up. I don't want to make any money off of it. I could care less about that. I need to talk to him. All right. Cause I, 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 I'm so sick of dealing with this scammer. All right. He has to understand that I know he is a scammer without a shadow of a doubt. Even Craig called in to talk about the situation. Hey, what's up, Craig? How are you? Hey, Craig, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, I'm live too. Just so you know, I, I don't even know what the hell's happening right now. If I'm being totally honest, I just, I just, my, my Twitter is going crazy and people saying that uh, we're getting ripped a new a hole and all this stuff. It's like, okay, he, that's he, he, he has lost his mind and decided to trash you. And he's apparently very upset that you guys made a lot of money and he made, he didn't make any of it. That that's what I'm getting. And I'm not sure what happened, but he changed his tune within what, maybe five hours. He was praising you guys, and then all of a sudden his dents or his viewers came in and said, oh, you guys ripped them a new a-hole during your podcast, and then I guess he talked with his wife, and they watched some of the podcasts, and he decided to change his whole schedule and decide to rip you and, and your team. So that's where we are. So we were um, watching it, and it's been an utter chaos, chaotic mess. And then King well, Star called me. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. Um, well, let me let me say this. I uh, I know this is happening. I haven't watched really any of it, but I know it's I know it's happening because my wife is watching it and she's literally laughing while watching it. So it, it's apparently like really funny. Um, so, I, but I I said I'm not watching it. I don't know. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I I sent uh, Phil. So we did our podcast today. And I sent an email to Phil just being like, hey, and he, he sent an email. He sent an email last night saying, hey, man, looking forward to being on the next show. Um, you know, uh, and, and I waited to respond till later today. And I later I responded this afternoon just saying like, hey, um, you know, honestly, it was, you know, we were kind of disappointed. Uh, the, the show went fine, but but it wasn't as great. Uh, you know, I'll just read you the freaking email. I don't care. Hold on. Um, let me just pull that up. I, like I said, I, I legit don't care. Um, By the way, he was sharing information on his podcast, conversations that you and Adam had that were not part of the podcast. So. But by the way, by the way, I, I saw this number being thrown out there, like tw twenty grand or something, made on made on 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 the thing. I, I mean, I'll share it with everybody right now. Here's the data right there. It was uh, we made one thousand nine hundred dollars on on the. Uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say twenty grand seems so like outlandish. Mm -hmm. If right. you guys would if you guys would have made five grand, I would have been like, wow, good stream. But like twenty grand just doesn't seem logical no 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 it was it was it, and that's the pre you that's pre youtube cut right so 
Uh, that was the amount of super chats, which is insane for us, right? That, that's a, that's a, it's a great stream. Um, and so, but like this $20,000 number is like insane. Uh, so, you know, and honestly, like, dude, I put like 80 hours of work leading up to this. So like, if you do it by hours, then you divide it by all the team. It's like, yeah, you know, like it, well, you know, it's like minimum wage. Congratulations. So, well, well Craig, we got to be honest, right? Yeah. Like if, if people wanted to donate money to DSP, he has a stream. Like he has a stream for that. They were donating money to you guys because you guys were doing the interview. It was a good interview and it was entertaining. That's why you got the donations. It's not his money. It just isn't in any right. sense. Well, and, and we didn't, you know, I don't pay for interviews. I think if people want to come on, they, well, they can, you know, they can Neither come do on. I. And, and, and uh, you know, people are like, did you pay Phil? No, we, we didn't pay anybody. We, we don't pay anybody to come on the show. I, I pay the, our co-host and, and uh, that's it. You know, if you want to come on the show, you're more than welcome to. But um, so let me just kind of read the email I, I shot, shot to him. Uh, he asked, he asked um, what my thoughts on the show were. I hope the show benefited you guys. If so, this may be a time. Uh, this may be the only time in history that my infamy has actually helped something. It's kind of, you know, blah blah blah. So uh, I responded with them. I said, I think the show went okay yesterday. We talked, we talked about it at length on today's on today's show as a debrief. I think we all left the the interview mentally exhausted, feeling incredibly frustrated. Um, at the end of the day. We want what's best for you, man. Uh, the thing, the things that are laid out about everything, the WWE mobile, mobile game, the bank stuff, it just doesn't make sense. There's too much evidence saying it's yours, uh, and your only evidence is saying that it's not. Uh, I feel like we gave you multiple opportunities to turn this thing around, and uh, you just seem so dug in. Even in the face of insanely detailed evidence, you wouldn't take it. Uh, even with Keemstar coming in, coming on, I tried to lay out the similarities you feel towards him and the way people feel about you based on things they've seen online. It was tough. Honestly, I'm just disappointed, man. Like I said, I and we want what's best for you. We very much do, uh, but you have to want to help yourself. When you're ready to take the next step, I'll gladly help you help you on your journey. You deserve to get to level two. I know you can do it. Craig brought up the point that Phil doesn't have many conversations in his life because of how much he streams with other people, as well as the fact that he hasn't adapted to how the internet is now compared to back in 2009. Phil, obviously, he speaks a lot as a living. Uh, it's what he does, and he has his stories that he goes to and such. Uh, but he very rarely gets called on, you know, uh, some, of the, some of the shit that he spews. Um, he doesn't and, have conversations. You're right. He doesn't right. like communicate and, with others. And I think that's one of the biggest things. And I mentioned this today as well, Phil. And I, I don't mean this in a derogatory manner, but he is a dinosaur online, right? He has not adapted to the way the internet has evolved, right? It goes back to him asking you to to email him as opposed to DMing, right? We like we DM tonight. Boom. Like we're we're talking to each other now. We're here talking 15, 20 minutes later, right? Um, things move quick, but he is um you know he still thinks that there's a uh, like a proper way of doing things like the whole the whole email exchange that he wanted from you but he has he hasn't evolved to the uh, to the quickness of the internet he hasn't evolved to the way youtube youtube functions and you know uh, adam adam said this early on you know uh, today he said you know he was he was very lucky to get in early that is what made dsp successful early on was he was there at the start but he didn't evolve with the game, which is why he's still back at, you know, where you're talking about level one. Um, so I, you know, that's kind of where, where it's at right now. And, and I, when, you, when you're in your office six days a week from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day, you know, 12 hours a day, 13 hours a day, whatever it is, whatever he said, um, it doesn't give you time to socialize. It doesn't give you time to have a normal life. You know, when do you have, and we, we touched on this yesterday. We talked about mental health. That's not a healthy lifestyle. It doesn't allow you the opportunity to interact with other people. And I feel like uh, he may, you know, that, that may be a very negative thing in his life. I, I, hope that, um, I hope that he finds time to find balance. Balance is incredibly important in any, any time in life. And I hope that, that he finds that balance. But just right now, his life does not allow that. I hope he sues me for calling him a scammer. I really do. Because then then we'll go and we'll my lawyer will demand all different types of proof and evidence and whatnot. And then we'll find out the truth. Please sue me, Phil. Please sue me. 
Duty told Craig that as a detractor, if Phil had admitted to having a gambling problem, then he would never bring it up again, before Craig talked about the low cost of making videos online. Personally, I can back this up. After buying a mic, a PC, a capture card, and the programs I use, it cost me nothing but time to make these. Yesterday, and that's kind of the, the crazy thing. Um, so, hey, hey, kind of where it's at, man. Hey, hey Craig. So I'm yes. a detractor. I, I pump out content of Phil, and yes, I'm one sure of his, do. I'm one of his critical ones, and I and I admit it. If he would have taken the opportunity that you gave him yesterday and admit it, and came on and said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm addicted to this. It's a problem." I I I've been saying it all day today. I wouldn't bring it up again in any of my video, because he. I think it's it. done. Yeah, it's done. Okay, go get your help. Go get your help. Go get yourself fixed. And I'll, I will give you a break. I will not bring it up ever again. Now, if, you know, in a few months or six months or whatever, he's doing the same thing all over again, then that's something different. But just the mere fact that he stood up, took was accountable, even after all of these years, lying about it, even though he stood up, I would say, okay, there, there's no point in browbeating this guy. Let's leave him alone on this issue and let him get the help. And hopefully he gets the help. So that is right. where this whole community comes from. All these people that are obsessed with DSP and like roasting him and picking on him, it all comes from a place of people being like, no, I'm not going to let you lie. I know you're lying. I'm going to pick on you. It's it, 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 it all this, this, all this energy, it comes from that him, him being dishonest and begging for money. All right. And people wanting justice. I think that, um, you know, the idea I, I see it. So you got to pay your bills, right? And that's, I think that's the thing with, with Phil is, you know, I got to, got to make sure I cover this tax, these taxes. I got to make sure I cover these, um, you know, whatever my, my, whatever bills it is. That's fine. We all get it. Um, you know, but there, there are people who literally track, track the revenue that he makes from his, from his streams on a, on a stream to stream basis. I mean, Phil tracks it with a counter on, on it. And, you know, they say that he, he makes based off of the math that Phil provides, uh, you know, over 100 K a year, some say up to 120 K a year. And, uh, you know, after taxes, I get it. You know, let's say you take 30 K of that and you pay taxes with it or whatever. Um, so he has 70 K left to cover his stuff. Right. That still doesn't add up. Like, look, I'm a streamer. I've, I've, I've worked online for 17 years. I've been doing this for a long time. I know that my business expenses start and stop from the second I wake up in a sit down once i once i cover the cost of my camera once i cover the cost of my lights and my computer i'm good like it, the, the cost is my time it doesn't cost me anything um outside of you know maybe a few assets here and there but it's you know uh but it, i think that's the thing that really bothers people is that when you're you know i know that's the thing that really bothers people is that when when you you know people feel like they're entitled to to know a little bit more about where their money's going when you're consistently saying you know, standing there with their hand out. And I, I get that's the big argument with Phil, and it will always be the argument with Phil. Um, and I, my thing is, like, you can ask, you can have your hand out all the time, but you got to at least reinvest it back into your content, you know, and uh, and give people an opportunity to uh, see what the, where their money's going. So, you know, it is what it is. So, um, Especially to, to be so entitled like that when, like, the average American, I think, makes, like, Thirty thousand dollars a year, or something like that, or right. fifty thousand dollars a year. It's not it's like half of that. Like what? This guy? Right. No. It's like again. I know very little about Phil, but like I understand everything now. I know why there's this hate wave on him, and it's been on him for years. It's because of this bullshit. Like, he is not a real person. He is not genuine. He is not honest. He's a scammer. I just see a scammer. Well, even today, coming back, I mean, it goes back to, you know, you're saying he's 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 addicted to being a victim, right? So what's what did he do immediately today? He, he became the victim again, and and the irony of all this is that, you know, folks like Duty and the detractor community, like I, I am I am not a detractor, right? I I just I gathered information. Keemstar commented that Wings and Boogie lie nowhere near as much as Phil does. I'm I'm so upset that this podcast didn't happen because. Look at how much would have unfolded with him having these conversations with like Boogie and Wings. Like people, people shit on Boogie and Wings like all the time. They would have noticed right away that like Boogie and Wings have their problems and they can be picked on or whatever. But ESP is something completely different. Like 
and look, I put out a tweet today with those two doing the boxing match. I mean, this is a big step for them, right? They're on level two, in my opinion. They're doing something different. They're trying something. You know, they got a new revenue stream other than, like, you know, streaming and begging for money. Um, Phil is always going to be on level one. He just is. He is. I, and I understand why this like uh, meme that I made or whatever or analogy that I made became a meme because it's so, it's so goddamn true. It's insane. Craig asked Keemstar if he was done with Phil, and Keemstar said that he would still do the podcast, but it would have to have a rock hard contract. Talking shit about me, so I come on this live stream. You know, it's I'm always in response of what he's saying. Right. Do you? Uh, so so it's very obvious that. You know, the thing that I got of, out of your interaction with him yesterday um, was was that you were just kind of done with him. Like you're done with with uh, you think he's really hard to work with, and you kind of understand why why he's uh, in the place he's at right now. He's he's just kind of difficult. If, if he wanted to do the podcast with um, Wings and Buggy, um, there'd be strong contracts. I'd still do it because at the end of the day, I know it's going to be a hit business right um, yeah there would have to be like some strong contracts like you know if he was difficult to work with you know we would all have you know me buggy and wings would have 75 percent of the company you know it would be we'd have to we'd have to put like some type of voting system right where he wouldn't be able to just like not show up or get his feelings hurt and run away like you know, we, we'd have to set up something that we're all agreeing to go in and do this show and people aren't going to get like emotionally butthurt and just run away from the project and hurt the project. Right. So, you know, there'd have to be some some strict contracts that we all sign to make sure that um, the show is a success and nobody can destroy can destroy it. Duty asked Keemstar if he ever considered replacing Phil for the Lol Cow podcast. And Keemstar said that he couldn't imagine somebody replacing him. So, um, have you guys, have you considered possibly replacing a DSP with another locale uh, for the podcast? Or maybe just consider doing it with Wings and Boogie? It's, it's so hard when you, when you, when I came up with this concept, right? I knew very little about DSP. It's like, I'm... I've thought about it so much and I've invested so much mental time. Like guys, I know this is sad to say and admit right now, but I probably have like, I don't know, at least seven straight hours docked in my brain of thinking about this and how it could work. And like, that's a lot of time when you really like think about it. Um, and I, I don't think there could be anyone else other than those three that would make this work, to be honest. Keemstar said that the only way he would ever talk to Phil again was if it was in real life. The only way I'm willing to probably talk to Phil again um, is if I can talk to him in person. I'll get on a plane, I'll fly first class all the way to the other side of the to the country where he's at, and I'll meet him at a coffee shop or something, and I want to sit and talk to a real person. I can't do this online stuff because he's not real. That's not a real person. That is an act. I am an expert in online entertainment, and that is not a real person. That is a – you're looking at a, a character. This is not a legitimate person. I would have to speak to him face-to-face -to, -face to have a real conversation. It's the only way. After Keemstar said that he believed that DSP was a character and not actually Phil – Duty would say that he believed that Phil and Darkside Phil were the exact same person. I, I don't think it's a character. Character. I think that's him. Phil and DSP are the same person. I, and it comes off with everything he does in his life. I mean, maybe maybe I might be wrong. And, and God bless you if you can go and, see and, and maybe tell us, oh, he's nothing like what we think he is. But, you know, he's been a content creator for 15 years. And he has over a hundred thousand videos on YouTube, and I, I don't think, I don't think there's anything more. I, I think what we see is who he is. Maybe, maybe off camera he isn't a different person, but that's the only chance I have to to get to like the real person. 
even if he's in his mind playing this character or whatever, even off camera, at the end of the day, there is a real person in there somewhere. But this is an act. That is not a real... He is acting like a victim. Like, clearly, right? He is lying about the the, the WWE stuff, right? The, the, and, and if it's lies and it's acting, then it is a character. It's not real. It's not legitimate. You know, it's not a real person. We actually get to see Craig say something that I never imagined he would say. We need to get a lawyer in here. Craig, yeah, let's get know. a lawyer on the show. <laughs> get Nick Ricada in here. Where's Nick Ricada at? <laughs> it's you... like fraud. It's a Gundam called in, and after some audio issues, talks to Kim about the situation. Here we go. Holy hell. Papa Gundam. All right. Joining us, we have Gundam, Duty, and Keemstar all on the same stream. Who's having fun? Nice to meet you. Oh, so, shaking. apparently you're the expert on DSP. Like a jackass, I had two audio things on. <laughs> you got us, Gundam? You, you sound good, Gundam. Test, test. He'll get it. There we go. All right, no, there, buddy? It's, it's not I just so you. Sorry. Craig and myself also had to change our audio <laughs> settings as soon as we joined. Discord does this every goddamn time, and it, it really makes me does. look like a douchebag. <laughs> Keem, oh. nice to meet you, brother. I was trying to get a hold of you since the day I started. Ironically, I was following a troll Twitter. Really? I was like, yeah. Keem, I'm your new boy. I'm the hottest thing in town. I hear that you are an expert in DSP. What did you think of uh, interview on um, side scrollers and whatnot? I'm not really an expert on DSP. I'm going to be real. The best guy of all times is Almighty Tevin. I'm a content creator that fell down a rabbit hole and I just can't stop falling. The stream <laughs> was absolutely brilliant. It started off slow at first. And then all of a sudden, Craig just goes, you know, good cop and Adam's bad cop, and they beat the living hell out of Phil for five hours straight. It was glorious. Gundam told Keem how to lure DSP's fan named Derich, as well as some theories about him. I, me and my assistant, we got bored like two nights ago, and I'm like, how can we find Derek? And she's like, well, it looks like Derek goes to, can we say like Cam's no. nights he goes to or no? Oh, no, 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 please no, don't. No, please no. don't. Please don't. <laughs> he goes to these campsites. And he, like, goes in the room and he harasses these girls. It's absolutely insane. Like, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, please say my name while you stuff that overly sized, uh, can I say the D word that's a phallic piece or no? We already know what it is. You don't we know, we know what you're yeah, going yeah. with. Derek is just going absolutely insane in there till the women have to, like, ignore him. And he's like, I'm crying in chat. I'm crying because you can't say my name if you want him. We'll just have to, like, get any one of these e-girls online, and Derek will show up. You can lure him. They're like bait. Interesting. Well, that'll be easy. Be I want to be though. there for that, please. <laughs> it, it got so bad where he started harassing porn stars, and they forced him to make apology videos. You can actually see some of them. It, it's oh, my God. Can we that. watch uh, an apology video on stream? Hey, dude, he did DSP react to the apology video, or was that fake? No, he did. He, which apology video? I'm sorry. The uh, Derek apology video, because I saw, like, a no, thumbnail for it on YouTube. Um, no, I, 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 he I can, I, I, I'm convinced now that I cannot do a documentary. This would have to be a docu-series. Oh, yes. We're, we're, right. we're, we're talking about, like, 20 hours of like on the edge of your seat, like this is Tiger King. Yes. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> How much do I have to invest to make money? I'm down. I'm so down. And I I'll invest too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Craig's sitting on 20 grand. <laughs> yeah. Right. After yesterday's stream, that's right. It was big money as we all saw. I, I, uh, DSP I hates I you, one. dude. I, I heard. I heard money. It, that's it. The second you make money and you didn't offer Phil anything, it's over. You're dead to him. Yeah, that, that was that's what I heard. I, I didn't watch the stream, but apparently he ripped us new What's new buttholes. Up? And uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it, it, it it's honestly it's 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 disappointing 
to me, and it's sad, but at the same time, you know, just once again, all the detractors, they said this was going to happen, and they were right. And it's too bad. When you gave me the e you shot me the email, you want in on the next DSP thing? I'm like, this is not happening now if I'm in the mix. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was the idea was was that the next opportunity was to bring in all the detractors who were in on the nitty gritty. And, uh, you know, I think it would have been would have been interesting for sure. But um, just judging based off of, I guess, the, the way he acted tonight or the way he responded to the initial interview, uh, it certainly is. is it, he does. He has no interest in coming back on. So, uh, yeah, you're sucks. number one on the shit list. Phil is protecting Derek so much. Is there some weird stuff like between the two of them that they're protecting each other's secrets? You know, I don't want to allude we, to. We have a couple of working theories. Like one of the working theories is that the guy, the gentleman we talked about, one minute man who never goes on stream, that gives Phil seven thousand dollars a year. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, there's a there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a theory that uh, that Derek's parents are actually one minute man. And pay no Phil way. to babysit. Pay Phil to babysit uh, Derek. That's one theory. <laughs> okay, that Dude, is wild. It's just, it's like, what happens with, like, uh, look, I've exposed so many, like, pedos online, um, especially in the Minecraft community through, you know, my w almost 10 years now on Drama Alert. What I always found out is that, like, their closest friends. Uh, a lot of time get busted too. Like these guys are in group chats. They they figure out that they're both like into like kids or whatever, and they make a friend group and they hold each other's secrets and they they stick up for each other and shit like that. Like I'm just putting this out there. I have no idea if this is true. I know very little about DSP and his audience, but is it possible that it's something like that? Like you know. Maybe maybe it isn't even CP. Maybe it's like Phil has this weird kink or something, and Derek does too. And Derek is a porn dealer, and they hold each other's secrets, right? Like maybe it's not even anything criminally, um, but could it be something like that? Here's my honest to god theory. If I recall correctly, Derek was uh, giving DSP money when he was underage using his parents' credit cards, and maybe you know there's some humanity left in Phil, and he saw that it's sweet and endearing, and he's like, "Come, boy." I shall take you on as my squire, and we shall watch shitty Wulong playthroughs together or something. Why does the chat keep saying scat? Like, what? Scat? The... Yeah, is Derek like... into that? Dude, the chat is spamming it in uh, side scrollers and in, uh, in this one, too. They keep talking about scat. I'm not but... looking that up. I've seen enough yeah, of Derek's I timeline. I think we're okay with that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have any interest in uh, exploring that. I don't have a whole lot of interest in exploring Derek, but I'll tell you, that seems like it's right up, uh, right up Keemstar's uh, alley right and, there. That's, that's yeah, and it's not, it's not just him. Like uh, Keem, I mentioned earlier, uh, a, a person called Pantley who used to be DSP's girlfriend. Keemstar told the history between him and Wings and pointed out that Wings hated Keemstar for 15 years and still took the deal. In his way from from taking that next step. So. I don't, I don't know if. If you guys really know the lore between me and Wings of Redemption, but in Wings of Redemption is like one of the oldest people I've known on the internet. I've known Wings for like 15 years. Um, we have always been enemies. We have never gotten along. We've never been on good terms. You know, there was a moment in 2011 where I did this uh, Call of Duty show, days. show with uh, Elky David, a billionaire. It was called Billionaire's Challenge. It was the first Call of Duty event with hundred thousand live concurrent viewers it was like my little project that i did and wings was a part of it and we were on somewhat good terms that year but that's it like through our whole history me and wings have never got along wings doxed me on machinima <laughs> <laughs> me and wings were fighting and sark um was like the head guy at machinima but back then this is like 2010 maybe He's interviewing um, me and Wings, and he's trying to make peace happen, like on Machinima. And in the interview, Wings goes, do you live at this address? And he starts reading out my address. So, like, we've never got along. So when I brought the Lolcal podcast to Boogie, and then Boogie brought it to Wings, 
Wings didn't care about any beef between me and him. He was like, I'm down. Like, you know what I mean? Get that money, pimp. For me and DSP to have no history, no beef back and forth, really, and him to be like, no, I hate that guy. He's a bad guy. It's like, that's, you hit it a nail on the head, Craig. Like, he is his own worst enemy. I hope that he eventually realizes that. Do I do I think that's going to happen? No. Um, it, it, like I said, it's it's this has been a script that that apparently has been played out many many times, and uh, it, it you know I I like I think the saddest thing for me is he was a fan of what I did you know uh, a decade ago, fifteen years ago when I had when I had Screw Attack, and uh, I ran this website called Screw Attack. It was pretty popular in the gaming space. We had a great community, and he was a community member there, and uh, that's kind of how he got his start in content. And um, I and he's he's always like you know he's always uh, I guess admired admired my work and um, you know over the you know various projects that I've done and and, and those things like that, um, which is why he wanted to come on the show uh, to begin with. And now it feels like I'd, I've done him dirty. And uh, but I think that if like I honestly feel and and I could be totally off, but I honestly feel that if you if you just look at the five hours we spent together objectively. I don't see how anybody can potentially look at it that way. Um, and even if you were to watch the post show we did today, I don't see how anybody can see that. Yes, we were frustrated about the situation and the same things that we said on stream, I said to him in email. These are things that I would say to him in person, but we just had time to digest a little bit more. Um, but now, once again, we are the bad guys. Who is the victim? It's Phil. Phil's the victim. So, um, and like I said, I, I was told this was going to happen. I was told this was going to happen by dozens of people. Look, he's going to turn on you. He's going to make you the bad guy. He's going to he's going to rat you out. He's going to make you seem really you know, like like an asshole. Guess what? Here we are, and it sucks. Judy brought in some DSP historians to help explain things better, and Craig asked why Phil was a scumbag. Why do you guys feel, in your words, he's a scumbag? Why do you feel like like DSP is a, like? Provide me with examples. This is something that. I you know, like I, mean, I can give you one right off the bat. Like I can give you one that like can resonate with anybody. Um, sure, he has yeah. a cat. He has a cat that he neglects. Um, again, because he's a social, you know, since he's a social pariah, he doesn't interact with people. He probably got this cat to like offset that or whatever. But um, you know, since he talks so much on screen, he gives off little details about how he neglects his cat. So my biggest one that I've shown before is uh, when Phil likes to go to bed, right? Phil likes to take the cat with him inside the bedroom and lock the door because he doesn't want the cat to get out. But at the same time, he doesn't want the cat's litter box to stink up the bedroom. So he leaves the cat, he leaves the litter box outside and leaves the cat without a means to relieve itself for several hours. Oh, that's so sucks. you can literally, you can hear DSP, DSP say like, yeah, you know, I try to get a good night's sleep because Phil likes to wake up at 10 o'clock, not nine, as he told you. Um, and basically the cat is waking him up because the cat has to pee. Um, another thing is it's on my, actually on my Twitter, uh, it's on my Twitter. It's pinned on my Twitter. Um, because of his negligence of his house, uh, he had, uh, gotten ants and he had gotten ant poison and he admitted on stream that the ant poison leaked out onto the floor and he did not clean it up specifically because he knew that the cat wouldn't eat it because the cat doesn't like sweet for some reason. So that's a personal beef with me. Um, and the other thing is just like him preying on these mentally malleable people. And if you watch, if you watch what he says, the devil's in the details. Cause he uses, like you said, he uses a lot of double speak. Uh, he uses a lot of gaslighting and these people can't like, you know, they're also socially awkward. So they can't tell whether he's lying or not. And some people do, and some, they just don't care. So those are the two main examples of like why I do what I do. Cause number one, he like, it's the cat that that really bothers me, and number two is like him preying on people. All right, it, well, I, is, it, it, that wasn't it, good. It, that wasn't good. Like you know, Craig Craig set you up. Like, dude, prove that he's an evil person, right? It's I, like he left the he left the poison. He's he's locking the cat in the room. It's like, guys, there has to be something better than this. Well, <laughs> but, there is. So no, oh, no, there, there is. There, there is. Like, that's what well, I'm saying. Like, that's my personal thing. Like, I'm saying that's my personal thing. You can nail me to the cross. I don't care. That's my personal thing. But, like, there's really, like, he really does go out of his way to set up cabal. Like, basically, it's this. He doesn't want to get a job. He wants to live life like his mommy and daddy's house. And he creates these lies and these scenarios for people to believe him. 
Okay, so like that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is that he creates these vortexes, these web of lies, which basically he would use to obfuscate what he's doing. So, for example, like the WWE champion thing, he's literally out there telling people that I am going ahead and using this for my shower that my wife broke. And then people give him the money and then people go, hey, I, you know, where's the money for the shower? Then he literally goes and looks in the screen and goes, I don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's like, that's none of your business. Like, why are you asking me about that? And then he'll go another way. He'll say, guys, I need, you know, money because I need to go see my parents because my parents, you know, they don't got a lot of time left. Da, da, da. And next thing you know, he's flying over there and it's so he can have a wedding with his wife. I, I, this, these are things that like proper can like really like give you these, documented evidence on like like they have like documents of this stuff this is uh this is so there's things stuff. like from like a normie perspective that might piss somebody off but then there's like somebody that's actually looking and digging deeper you would see like you know not necessarily like you want to freaking nail you know you want to you know kill the guy but the thing is it's like you need a spotlight on him so he doesn't continue doing these so, things so basically you're just kind of backing up what we all been saying is like he's just dishonest and he's like potentially a scammer he's a scammer I mean, he's a scammer all, and he's very neglectful. neglectful he's very neglectful that's another let thing me say this covering. this is this is about on the uh, dsp cliff where i'm gonna take a step back and be like i'm good i'm pretty good um <laughs> and, so and that's fair that's fair yeah. it, you know, a lot of these guys who you're talking to right now, they're they're newer detractors. They haven't been around as long as I have. You know, so, the, so the thing the... is, is that, you know, Phil for years, his behavior towards people has just been abusive. He's used his parents as an excuse for things. He's used his girlfriend's own sickness as excuses for, for different reasons. I mean, this... this pattern of behavior goes back for as long as i can remember when it comes he, to phil he's a he's a professional victim he's a professional victim he, he is and and he's mm -hmm. even gone as far as scamming his mom for tax money whoa and, and what okay. it that way. Yes, I, I, the 10-year plan well, I'm, and with that oh, plan, i was just, just about that. to leave i was just about to leave but just explain the tax money with the Keem, real quick before you explain that Keem, thank you very much gundam it's a pleasure to talk to you I, I you're you're fascinating and i can't wait to have you on the show sometime Keem, i'd love to have you on as well if you have if you have the opportunity leading up to the big boxing match uh duty thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity agent proper and shinko thank you guys very much i'm going to say good night uh but thank you guys very much for your time and allowing me to uh be a part of this i really appreciate it thank you very much after Craig left, we hear about Phil scamming his own mother before everyone left the stream. Have a good one, Craig. Hey guys, right. bye bye. Tell me, tell me about the mother taxes thing, because I I am curious, but then I'm gonna this go. Is, that thing pro proper okay. has to like this is proper. So Phil, when he left to Connecticut to go get married, he was in a uh, financial distress. Leading up to it, he was telling us how he didn't have the money to go and propose to Kat to go ahead and marry the girl. How he couldn't set up certain things along the way to even go see his quote sick and dying parents now phil used this as an excuse to get out there and marry cat behind everybody's back after and he told us all that he didn't have money to do it three times over yeah so he he tried to get it as a kind of a flex on trolls and his wedding night he argued with trolls on twitter oh that was funny as fuck yep being with you his wife he went after I mean, another YouTuber, remember? And then everyone was like, yeah. Phil, you're married. Calm the fuck down. And, and he had this whole story when he came back during his stream about how he had to have a sit-down talk with his good mom and tell him, you know, I, I need some help with some stuff. I'm going through some problems, you know. His mom tried to give him the money to go take his wife on a honeymoon. And he decided instead to use it for tax money. And she gave it to him under the premise that he had a 10-year plan to get off YouTube. Yeah. Which, okay. well, it's, it's okay. not working out I've well. heard enough. I've heard enough. I've heard enough. All right. Rip cord, this just backs up. This backs up my theory. All right. This guy is addicted to being a professional victim and begging for money. This is who he wants to be. This is what he wants to do. If he were to win a million dollars in the lottery, he would not tell anyone would go on stream and he would say guys i need money to pay for my rent i need money to pay for this i need money to pay for that he would not tell anyone if he had 
million dollars in the bank right now, you wouldn't see any change in Phil. What I've said from the very beginning and what I figured out in my little experience here with DSP is that this is a character. This is not legit. This is not fucking real. This guy is playing a fucking professional e-bagger online. This is his avatar in this metaverse we call YouTube. I, I'm telling you, that is what is going on here. I can see it clear as day. Thank you guys for having me on the show. If, if you ever get out there and get that interview with him and prove me wrong that he is actually just playing a character, I, okay. I mean, but for the 15 years I've watched him, Phil on stream is still Phil off stream. Like right now you are seeing a 40 year old man begging every single day from a gullible audience who wants to support him no matter what. Let me and, ask and you that's a question. Okay. If, I, if I'm so wrong, all right, let me ask you a question. If he had a million dollars in his bank account, would he tell his audience or would he still act like he needs money to pay rent? No, he wouldn't. He, he, is, would, he has been exposed he, he twice He's been for uh, setting up money behind the scenes, selling statues. Uh, Tevin did a video <laughs> on it. And then there was another yeah. tractor that got him for 9K or faked him out of 9K. So, he, so. he talks to his whales behind the scenes through email. And he tries to set up donations, tries to talk to them to support certain events. He tries to really kind of squeeze them out of any cash they can. He wants to right, peel that Velcro wallet wide open. I, I got to go. Thank you for having me on, Dodie. Good, Good time. time. No problem, man. Thank you for uh, stopping by, man. I appreciate it. And I may as well get to editing. I got 12 hours to go. <laughs> All right, thanks for jumping on, Gundam, and I appreciate it's it. It's good to meet you, dude. Thanks, you your proper. Your name is a legendary in the scene. Oh, okay. hey, man, if you ever want to talk, we'll talk. I mean, yeah, that's my fine. DMs are open. And that's it. I don't know what happens after this, and I need to take a little fill break. I thought this was going to be a one-hour bridging of the original interview, but just like my Drift King saga, this got wildly out of hand. Thanks for sticking around, guys, and I gotta head out. As always, thanks for dropping by.